estate. Uh, our first thoughts um, are quite properly with the immediate family. And so my condolences, that of my party, uh, first and foremost, go to our Queen, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, to whom as consort Prince Philip was such a rock and such a support for so many years. And then too, of course, to his grieving family, his children and their children, and all in that wider family. They will all grieve as we do when we lose one so close. There will be no difference to their grief. They will feel the same emptiness, the same pain, the same suffering. And now, after 73 years of married life, Her Majesty must face her public and private life without her rock. There will be difficult, tough days for the Queen in all of that, particularly for someone themselves in advanced years. And I do pray that she finds the strength to carry on in the remarkable era that has been her rule over us. But today we also celebrate a remarkable and incredible life of service to country and to people. From his service in the armed forces, then to his decades of service as concert and his dedication to that cause and to the people it served. And filtering down right to the very, uh, throughout our society, through the Duke of Edinburgh award scheme, which empowered and reached so many. Everything else apart, that is a lasting legacy of particular note. And yet he was a man, though in that elevated position, refused to allow the position that he held to mould him. Despite his exalted position, his willingness to speak his mind brought a stamp of authenticity and sometimes indeed a smile to our faces. And that is a characteristic that very often is lost in public life, but not with the Duke of uh, Edinburgh. And of course, he was not immune from pain and suffering in his life. Indeed, something that marks an affinity with so many in this province was the brutal murder of his uncle, a 79-year-old, blown to bits by the IRA with other relatives and friends. A wicked act of the calibre that left so many in this province also bereft of friends and relatives at the hands of terrorism. And today would have been a good day for the Republican movement to unequivocally say sorry. But of course the Deputy First Minister doesn't do sorry. At most, all that Sinn Féin can muster is what the journalist Jenny McCartney aptly described as the carefully calibrated mixture of dogged 
justification and fuzzy regret. But today we remember a great, a giant in our lifetimes, whose contribution to our national life has been immense, but whose life, which inevitably, in the mortality that denotes us all, has run its course. Our nation and our people are the richer for his living. And so today, on behalf of my constituents, on behalf of my party, I join in mourning his passing. And in grateful memory of the life of His Royal Highness, Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, I convey the deepest sympathy to Her Majesty and record thankfulness for the lifetime of service and devotion to our monarch, to our nation, and to our people. Thank you. I call Evan Poots. Speaker, and as a representative for the constituency most visited uh, by Her Majesty the Queen and her late husband, uh, the Duke of Edinburgh, uh, can I express my sympathies to Her Majesty um, on the death of her dear husband.